Here we have the word art. It isn't three-dimensional, but gives us more complex shapes to deal with to find shadows. Let's see how we can use the same kind of flagpole technique to find the shadow of these letters. Notice I've already found the ground angle and the angle down. Let's start with one vertical. Now I've made a flagpole that started from the top, came down, but came all the way down to where it would hit the ground if it was extended. Knowing the angle down, we can drop in the ground angle and find out if this was a whole pole where this shadow would stop. Now the shadow of the top of the T doesn't go all the way from the ground, so we have to find what part of that line is the shadow. Well, we found the top of the shadow by using the angle down, and we found where it came over the top of the T. We can use the same angle to find out where the light comes under the T. Now we know where the shadow is from this edge of the T. Let's find some more poles that represent verticals in the T. Now as you do this on more complex objects, it gets kind of confusing and you have to keep straight about what intersection equals what part of the object. Since we found the top of this pole, which is the underside of the T, and we know the underside of the end of the T, we can connect these just as they're connected here, we connect them here, and we have that part of the shadow done. Let's go on and find the other parts of the T. Here we found the other side of the T, just like we did the first one, only we found it over here. So we're going to have the shadow here. And just as these two were connected, these two will be connected. And just as this top and this get connected, the top of this and the top of this will be connected. This shadow line here, from the T that goes clear down, will show. There we have the shadow of the T. Now I'll drop in the other flagpoles we could use for the rest of the letters. Notice when I put the flagpoles in for the curved top letters, I went all the way up as if they were boxy like the T. Once I've found the basic shape of the shadow, we then can figure out how the curve would appear. Here's the first flagpole, the A. And here's a trick. Once you've found the height of this A, it's the same height as the T. So its shadow is going to be the same. So you can find a line that follows along them all, and you'll have the tops for all of the flagpoles without drawing as many lines. Now I can carry down the angle down on all these to find the intersections. Here we have the main part of the shadow of the A. This is where we come back and figure out the curves. Now because this curves into a large angle and here a tight angle, this is going to be more of a sweep. This is going to be a tight curve. And the same on the inside of the A. And there you have the shadow of the A. Moving on to the R, we still have our divisions here, but we have to find out where this top is here of the V-shape. But we do know that the shadow goes from this point to here. So if we find this point, which is right here, we know it's going to slant down to this corner. Now for the inside of the R here, it's going to slant down and have kind of a box that would fit in. Again, we have curves, so we need to figure those out. Now to complete the little curves as we did in the A, the slope here is the same as here, 
we know it starts at the bottom and it goes up to where the flagpole hits that little intersection there on the R. Carrying down the angle, it goes to this point right here. Now to finish the R. The flagpole method, using your ground angle and your angle down, is an easy way to find cast shadows. Earlier in this video, we looked at doing curves and curved shadows. And we approximated how they would be by thinking them through. Now we're going to look at how to do them more precisely. Especially when you have big objects that have curves or big curves. Here we have a circle in isometric. Isometric is a false perspective in drafting. We're going to find its shadow using the pole method. We'll decide on what kind of ground angle and what kind of angle down we want and we'll go from there. So here's our circle and I've designated a ground angle and an angle down. Here are my first three poles that I'll use to find the shadow of the circle. This pole is from the center top to the center bottom. Now an isometric, it looks a little funny because this curve goes over like this, but this is the center. And these two poles go from halfway up the circle to the ground on a line that shows where the circle sits on the ground. Here is the angle down and the ground angle for the center pole. Coming down, we find where the top of the circle would be, and we know that the bottom is right where it rests on the ground. Now I do the same thing to find where the shadow would be halfway up the circle, on this side, from the top of this pole, bottom of this pole. It would be here, same on this side, here. And now I have four points that represent top, bottom, and the two sides of the circle. Not quite enough to figure out what the circle looks like. So we'll add some more poles. These poles are placed halfway between the poles that are already there. Here we've located the top of this pole and we see where that point would be. Now using the same pole, just as we did with the T, we can find another point. We use the same ground angle, angle down, from where this pole crosses the edge of the circle, and we get another point. Likewise, with this pole over here, we can find the top and its point, and the bottom and its point. This shows where the pole intersects the circle now we have more dots, but we might want to have more so that we have a better judge of where the circle is rather than try and guess how the curves go. To do that, we'll just add more poles. Now I've added two more poles, each one in between the two outside ones, and they'll have intersections with the circle so that I can plot where their shadows start and stop. On the first new pole, I calculate where the top of the pole would be and find its point. Find where the line intersects the circle and where it would be, so I have another point. Move over to the other side with this next new pole and we find the top and then we find the bottom intersection. Now we have a good number of points to find the elliptical shadow of this circle. Which would give you this shape shadow from this circular object in isometric. When you need more points to get it correct, just drop in more poles and calculate their shadows. 